Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us here on the Elm Sports Network. We're inside the Truslow Boathouse right down the street at Washington College, and I'm joined by the head coach, John Leakley. John, thanks for coming down and you know inviting us in the boathouse. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming down. Happy to show you guys around and talk a little bit about the teams and, and what we have coming this season. All right, great. Sounds good. Okay, so we're in uh, what we call the big, our big boat bay, and this is where we hold our eights, which are hung up on this rack over here. We have two of them that are down in slings because we're working on, on a few repairs for these for these boats. And over on the other side uh, are our are, are men's fours. Um, the eights are all made out of uh, carbon fiber. Um, they're very, very light. This one is about 60 feet long and uh, fully, fully rigged up with all the riggers on it. So over here, uh, we have our women's, this is the women's first varsity eight and the women's uh, second varsity eight shell. And up above me is the men's uh, first varsity eight shell. Um, boats are named after folks that uh, either contributed something important to the program or to the school, uh, or in some cases donated the money for the boat itself. And usually those are folks that were associated with the program as well. Uh, like this one, for instance, uh, is named after Peter Tacky. And you can see it's Peter Tacky with the Roman numeral two. Uh, Dr. Tacky was a philosophy professor at the college and he helped start the program uh, back in the 1960s. And uh, we've got a bunch of names, na or a bunch of boats named after him now. Um, John Wagner, that's the men's second varsity HL. Uh, John was an alumnus and is, was the waterfront director and the rowing coach for a long time. He's still around, uh, around and is a volunteer now with the, with, with the guys team. And if we walk over here, uh, this is where our women's, our women's oars are, and over here are our men's oars. Um, every rowing team and rowing club has their own blade design. Ours are two red stripes, which reflect the George Washington's family crest, which has two red stripes and, and uh, three, three stars on it. Um, that design goes back to when the program started in the 1960s. Um, the program's approaching its 50th year. We started in the 19, right around 1967, and so we're right at, right at about 50 years now. Inside the rowing shell, uh, you'll see that it has a seat that slides back and forth. Uh, this is the bow seat of the boat because this is the bow end. And then when a rower gets in the boat, they don't uh, bring their own shoes with them. They tie themselves, uh, or they have shoes in the boat for them. So they get in the boat and, and put, the, put their feet in, in here. And their feet are stationary in, in the boat and locked in for the entire time that they're there. And, uh, and it's their seat that moves back and forth. So uh, all the shoes are... Uh, it's not one size size fits all. These shoes in particular, this is kind of a new, this is a newer design, but these shoes uh, pop out like bike shoes. And so everybody can have their own size and their own shoe in the boat. And it just clips, clips right in, just like, just like on a bike. Uh, if you have a, a, a race, a race bike. Um, it's also a safety device. So if the boat were to flip, it's easy to get out. There you go. Uh, it's easy to, to get out rather than being stuck in the shell. Um, uh, a rower's oar, you know, we talked about the oars and the racks over there. This is called the oar lock, where when a rower gets it, puts their boat in the dock, they can lift up what, what, what we call the gate, and the oar goes right into the oar lock, and we lock the oar in. So the oar stays in the oar lock during the, during the entire row. So if we walk in here, this is our erg room. This is where we spend uh, most of our winter, and any day that we can't get out of the water, we'll be in here on the indoor rowing machines. Um, we've got 25 rowing machines down here that we share between the men's and the women's programs. This is um, this is this is where a rower spends spends their winter. This is where a rower gets in shape. This is where a rower does the work that they that they need to do in January and February and in, and, in, and in December and in the beginning of March sometimes and the end of March as the, as is the case this year, in order to get fast for race season in March, April, and May. Okay, so it's still in the air room on the other side now. Uh, if we walk over here, we'll see we have plaques of all of our MVPs, most improved, um, our, uh, a few women's, no more than a few women's All-American rowers, um, our ERG records, um, 5K, 6K, and 2K for the whole team, and an old trophy case where I'll move this bike out of the way, but you can see in the trophy case, I don't know if you can see that, but this is the first, the first megaphone that a coxswain used at Washington College back in 1960. They got this was from 1968, but it was about a year old then. And there's old trophies here from races that we used to have, uh, where we used to host a race or hold a race with uh, Mary Washington University and with Johns Hopkins and with a few other schools.
So if we walk this way, I'll take you down to the indoor tanks. And on the way, if you look up, you'll see all our small boats. We have a bunch of singles and pairs up, up top. Uh, we don't spend a lot of time racing these boats necessarily, but these are great for training. Uh, the smaller the boat, the more technical you have to be in your rowing. And so we'll spend time in those in order to get uh, better technically. Rowing the small boats um, as often as we can helps us with our technique when we get back into the, into the big boats. Um, we race eights here. Most of college rowing is either eights or fours. We're an eights program right now, um, predominantly on the men's and the women's side. So we'll spend time in the smaller boats, which helps us row in the bigger boats. So now we're going to walk into the indoor tanks that we have here. And this picture is all around. Like these are our old spring break pictures uh, from years years past, where we would um, most of the time we'll head down to Florida. Every year is a little a little bit different. But and if you look up to there's alums will put if you've rowed here you can grab an oar and uh, design it and stick it on the on the wall somewhere in the in the in the boathouse. So you have you have people going back to the 70s and our early 70s with their with their with their oars. These are some of our more recent ones. So this is the in, this is our indoor tanks. Uh, this is the port side here. Uh, starboard side is up the stairs and around over there. It's not exactly like being out in the in the boat. Here you push the water around. Uh, as, as you row, whereas on the water you're not necessarily pushing the water, but you're moving the boat past where your oar is placed into the, into, in, into the water. It's great too in the fall when we bring our novice guys down here. So we have a, about 25 to 30 to 30 percent of the team doesn't row before they come to college, and so we will, it gives us a chance to teach them how to row here before we send them out on, on the river. And then it gives us a chance to really get technical with guys and to be able to actually get hands on and, and help them with where their hands go and how their blade goes in the water and 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 really hone in on some on some specific stuff. All right, John, thanks for the boathouse tour. We really appreciate it. Now, just a few follow-up questions. You guys haven't had a race yet. First race will be tomorrow. How's the preseason going for your team and what do you look to get out of the races this year? Well, we're real excited to get started finally. We um we had a the end of our fall was was really really productive. Um after the head of the Charles, you know, at the head of the Aquaquan and then at the Prospect Regatta, we Gained a lot of confidence coming out of those. Uh, this winter, the erg scores have been faster than last year, and um, we've had a few guys hit some personal bests that were surprising and impressive, and that's carried over then to the water. We had a great training trip in Florida over spring break. The weather has been a little little tricky here since we've come back, but you know we've, we're still showing uh, we're still showing signs of. Of, of some promise. We're excited to race tomorrow night. That's against St. Mary's College. Uh, we're going to dedicate a new boat as well uh, that night to one of our one of the founders of the program. And then Saturday morning, right after that race, we're going to go up and, and tangle with LaSalle, which is a, a traditional race for us, which we're excited about. Um, we just got some of our competitors for some of our bigger races coming up over the next few weeks, and it's 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 men's rowing right now in college is, is really competitive, and so it's going to be we have a big challenge ahead of us, that's for sure. But I'm I'm confident that our their, their best shot will, will keep them competitive. All right, great. And although the race is, first race of the season will be tomorrow night, we will put the, descript, the results below in the description as well as Saturday's race. So, John, thanks for inviting us. We really appreciate the time, and it was a very fun time touring your boathouse. Yeah, thanks for coming down.